In this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through kind of the very beginning steps of what you can expect when you come to the mountain as a new snowboarder or as a little refresher for somebody. So I try and adjust my board. Yeah! Woohoo! Okay, so first thing I'm gonna go over um, when you come to the ski hill and if you're going for a lesson or you're getting into snowboarding, one of the most important things is to really understand the terminology, understand the anatomy of everything you have. And, and the reason for that is when you take a lesson, it's really nice to be able to speak the same language as your instructor and to understand all the components of your board and kit. So I'm going to walk you through that really quickly here and just give you an idea of the kind of terminology they're going to be using in a snowboard. Uh, instruction. So yeah, basically this is the snowboard here. Uh, if you think of it like a dog, there's going to be a nose and a tail. The nose will just be the uh, the tip that's closest to your front foot and the tail's obviously the one that's at the back foot. So if you just picture a dog on top of this, <laughs> that's kind of how you can remember that. This is going to be the top of your snowboard or the top sheet. This is going to be the base of the snowboard. Each edge is gonna have a name here too, and depending on your foot orientation, it's pretty simple to remember. There's gonna be the toe edge and the heel edge. Uh, the toe edge is gonna be the one that your toe hangs over. The heel edge is gonna be the one that your heel hangs over. We're gonna talk about the bindings now. So on the bindings, you have the high back, which is this piece here. You have the base of the binding, and then you have two straps generally on most bindings. So you'll have the top strap here, and you'll have what's called a toe strap. So you have the top strap and toe strap. When you're putting on your board, we'll go over this later, but the top strap gets done up first, then the bottom strap. There are different types of bindings. There's step-ins, there's flow bindings. Uh, there's a number of different bindings. There's boards without bindings, but we're not getting into that. So that kind of gives you an idea of what the board is and what the binding setup is. So you have your front foot and back foot. And I'll get into that later as well, knowing which one uh, is your front foot and back foot. Basically, if you kick a soccer ball, which foot do you use? For me, I kick a soccer ball with my right foot, which means that's probably my more powerful foot. And I'm gonna be using that foot on the back. So generally, if you don't know if you're front foot or back foot, I'd say 70% of people are regular footed, which means their left foot is at the front like me and 30% is gonna be goofy footed where their right foot is up front. Doesn't mean you have to stay there, but it's usually a good go by. And yeah, that's kind of it for the anatomy of the snowboard. Uh, boots are boots and that's it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that nobody on the planet is a natural snowboarder. No human body is designed to be strapped to a board sliding at 40 kilometers an hour going sideways down a hill. Um, some people pick it up easier. People that uh, play sports that tend to have a lot of balance, like hockey, uh, generally seem to pick it up a little better because they got that rocking motion and that balance on kind of a rocked surface. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is basically the types of snowboards you can buy, purchase, use. The beautiful thing about like snowboarding is a snowboard 20 years ago does not look that different from a snowboard today. Um, snowboarding is one of those sports that are really pure. So the better you are at it, the more you'll get out of your boards. Um, buying new gear doesn't always, rarely makes a big difference in how you perform on the mountain. But I'm gonna walk you through kind of a few different types of snowboards. This board here is a wide board. So if you have feet that are a little bigger, over a size 10 and a half, I would say, uh, I would go for something that's kind of a wide board. So this is a 163 medium wide, mid wide board they call it. And that just gives it a little more width around the waist so that when you're on edge, your boot's not gonna hit the ground and you're gonna lose that edge. You're gonna have a wider width, which will make it a little better for carving and getting a little further into turns down the road. Um, this is also a rockered board. So the shape of it, it's kind of like a rocking chair or a surfboard. And it's great in powder, it's great in soft snow, but where it really struggles is in harder pack snow or icy conditions. 
and the reason you want to get a rockered board is if you're in a place like I am where it's softer snow generally, a little more powder and that kind of thing. Where you want a regular camber board is the other kind of type of board is when you are on harder surfaces. So if you're skiing or, or if you're snowboarding at a place like Marmot Basin or Sunshine or somewhere where it's a little colder, a little more icy, um, and you're doing a lot more groomers, it's really nice to have that camber because it really locks you into a carve again down the road. Um, between that, there's so many different variations of snowboards. Between the rocker and the full camber, there's flat bases, there's V rocker, there's what Nitro calls a gull wing rocker, which I had before this board and really liked. But one of the attributes about it they would mention is that it had a kind of a drifty feel to it. And that's super true. <laughs> so it's kind of like if you see those cars that drift around corners, it takes almost nothing for them to flick into a full on drift. That's how this feels. It's really hard to hold on an edge, but once you get to a certain level, it's, you can do it, but a camera board is going to be where you want to be. So that's kind of things to keep in mind. If you're just starting out, a camber board's the way to go. You're likely going to be doing mostly groomers. You're likely going to be learning on not too crazy terrain. So what I'm going to go over right now is the setup of a binding and kind of the pieces of the binding and how it all works together so that you have an idea when you're putting on your board for the next few steps. So basically you want to get your high back all the way up and you want to get your uh, straps completely out of the way. If there's any snow in there, you want to clear it out. And then you just want to sink your boot in, get your heel as far back as you can, and then do that top strap up first. So getting it right over the crux there of your boot, tightening that so it's locked in. The next step is to take the toe piece and strap that over your toe nice and tight. And that's gonna give you a really nice locked in feel for your boot. Now to release, a lot of bindings used to have these little pieces here that were the only way to loosen the binding. Now you can usually grab the whole piece here with kind of a knuckle is what I do. And if you push down and pull up at the same time, that slides completely off. And it's the same thing here. Just grab on to that piece and pull it completely off. And that's how you get your boot out of the snowboard.